Jefferson error, as we've talked about, is a way of quantifying how accurate your data is, how close your data is to a true value, whereas range gives us an idea about precision, how reproducible repeated measurements were. So to do that, we have this sort of fictional story where Bill and Wally, two friends, both have two different fitness trackers, and they're curious as to which one's a better fitness tracker. And so they know they can quantify better, better or best, by percent error for accuracy and range for precision. So to do this, they decided that they will individually walk exactly 100 steps. And after 100 steps they walked, they will then note on their fitness tracker how many steps the fitness tracker think, thinks that they walked. So Bill walks 100 steps. And in fact, the fitness tracker also confirms that yes, Bill walked 100 steps. He then repeats the experiment. This time he walks an additional 100 steps, but his fitness tracker recorded he walked 109 steps. He did it again, he walked 100 steps, but then his fitness tracker recorded 102 steps, and likewise with the fourth experiment and fifth experiment. While it is the exact same experiment, he walked 100 steps, counted them out, but then he noticed his fitness tracker, his fitness tracker recorded only, or in this case, recorded 104 steps the first time. The second time he did it, it only recorded 99 steps. Etc. So let's say we're going to judge the quality of this data both by its accuracy, precision, accuracy, percent error, and precision with range. So with percent error, we're going to take our experimental value minus our true value divided by a true value times 100%. So notice that with percent error as a way of measuring accuracy, we have to have a true value. We have to have, we have to know what the number should be. In this fictional story, we know that the true value in each case, they actually walked 100 steps each time. And then these are their experimental values. The question becomes then, well, experimental value, which one should I use? Should I use the first number, the second number, the third number, the best number, the worst number? Well, if we take multiple measurements, but when we do take multiple measurements, it's very likely that there will be some range, some variance in our values. It's usually best to find the average of those numbers and use that as our one experimental value. So to do that, we'll find the average for Bill. And to find average, all we need to do is take the individual numbers. All these are going to be in step units. Steps plus 109 steps plus 102 steps plus 84 steps, plus 90 steps finally. And then divide that by the number of observations. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five observations. So we divide that sum total by five to get the average number of steps as recorded by the fitness tracker when Bill took actually 100 steps. We have 100 plus 109 plus 102 plus 84. It's 90 divided by five, we get 97 steps. So on average, even though Bill actually walked 100 steps, his fitness tracker on average said he only walked 97 steps. Same idea with Wally. We're going to take his individual measurements, 104 steps plus 99 steps plus 102 steps plus 97 steps, plus finally 103 steps. The sum of the individual measurements divided once again by the number of observations and like with Bill, Wally did this five times. So divide our total here by five, so we have 104, it's 99 plus 102, it's 97 plus 103, divided by five gives us 101 steps. So we can see that without even going any further with equation 1.1, that Wally's fitness tracker seems to be on average more accurate than Bill's because on average, his number of steps was closer to the true number compared to Bill's. But to actually quantify, to actually put a number to it, we need to find the percent error values. So once again, with percent error, we're going to take our for Bill, 
take our experimental value, which said it's going to be the average number, 27. Subtract from that, so that's the steps here. Subtract from that the true number, which in all cases was 100 steps. Divide that by what the true value was, which is also 100 steps. And then multiply that by 100%. And when we do that, 97 minus 100 divided by 100 gives us a value of negative 3%. So we can say then that for Bill, his error was negative 3%. So on average, this means that his fitness tracker was recording about 3% fewer steps than he actually was taking. With Wally, same idea. I'm going to take our average value as our best experimental number, 101 steps. Back from that, the true number, 100 steps. Divide that, once again, also by the true number, 100 steps. Multiply by 100%. We do that, 101 minus 100, divided by 100. Gives us positive 1%. Error for Wally, which means that on average, Wally's fitness tracker was recording about 1% more steps than he actually was taking. So you can see then that Wally's value, Wally's numbers are more accurate because his percent error, his absolute value of the percent error, is less than the percent error for bills. So the smaller the percent error, the more accurate the data was. So Wally's fitness tracker is certainly more accurate. So now, secondly, to find precision, to quantify precision. Well, Wally's is more accurate, but it's also more precise. Maybe Bill's is more precise. Well, to quantify precision, we'll use equation 1.2, which is range. And range is probably one of the simplest equations that we'll ever need to use. It's simply taking the highest value that you get, subtracting from that the smallest value. And so for Bill, his range, we look at the individual numbers and we find the largest number, so 109. This is the maximum value for Bill. The smallest value looks to be 84. So that's the minimum value, and we just find that difference. So for Bill's, Bill's range, we have the maximum value 109 steps minus the smallest value 84 steps. And we get a difference then of 109 minus 84 a difference of 25 steps. So this range is that difference between the largest number and the smallest number gives us an idea as to the spread of the data or how, or how reproducible the data might be. The smaller the range, the more reproducible it is, the higher the precision. So Bill's precision was about 25 steps. For Wally, same idea, we'll look at our numbers, find the highest number, and also note the smallest number. So the highest number here is 109, so 104 rather, so this is the maximum number. And the smallest value here looks to be 97. So for Wally, we'll take our largest number, 104 steps, minus the smallest number, 97 steps. And that difference, 104 minus 97, is only seven steps. So not only is Wally's fitness tracker also more accurate because that's a lower percent error, it also turns out to be more precise because its range is smaller. 